So I remember when I was a principal, I tried to be as helpful as I could to every person, you know, would listen to some of the things that they would struggle with, you know, whether it was professionally, personally, and I always wanted to be there for as many people as possible. And that didn't just include my colleagues, my staff, it was my students, it was, you know, their families. And it was something that I really strive to do every single day. And I can't say that I was always successful. Uh, you know, uh, some days I was better than others, but I always wanted to help. And eventually what happened was I got to a point where I took on the stress of so many other people that I burnt out and I had to take a leave, struggle with it. And I'm okay talking about this. I, I, I think it's actually important that we share it. Yeah. Like some points, you know, we had maybe breakdowns. Um, we had to take some time off and I was, I was just really blessed to have a very understanding administrator who didn't actually just encourage me to like, just to take it, but actually said like, you need some time, you need some time to recuperate, to get better. And eventually with that time, I, I, I felt better. I was able to come back and I really needed to like recalibrate um, everything I was doing because I was spending so much time trying to help everyone else that I wasn't helping myself. And that led to my own burnout. And then you look at 2020, 2021, uh, the last while in school, and so many people have felt that way that they're trying to help so many other people that they don't have time to take care of themselves. I think it is very imperative that we find that time, we find those opportunities to do this. And I know that um, that depends on the communities where we work in, uh, the administrators that support us. And it's really important. That's part of the reason I want to share this too, is for the administrators that, uh, listen to this, that, yeah, you need to make sure that you take care of the people you work with. Um, but you also got to take care of yourself and you also got to make sure that we don't create cultures where burnout is the norm. Uh, because we often will spend a lot of time with mental health initiatives, um, but we don't necessarily address the problem that's creating the need for the initiative in the first place. And so I was really interested in having this conversation with Morgan Michael. And she has such great insights about this, not only about you know how to deal with teacher burnout, but actually thriving after that learning to recuperate, learning to find, you know, things that you're passionate about, developing your own creativity. It was a really great conversation. Uh, she has a book available for pre-order right now. You can see it in the links as well. I know you're going to appreciate this very wonderful conversation. I hope you enjoy it. Welcome back to another episode of the Innovators Mindset Podcast. Hey everyone, it's George Kroos. Welcome back to another episode of the Innovators Mindset Podcast. And I have Morgan Michael on today and I've connected with Morgan. She's uh, actually an educator in Victoria, BC, Canada. So basically like an hour flight from me. We connected on Instagram a long time ago. I've been on her podcast. So I like called in a favor and said, you have to be on my podcast now. So like, that's kind of like the podcast deal, right? Like we have to swap podcasts, but um, I've been following Morgan for a long time time and just uh just so many great stories so many great things that she shares and really when i check out your instagram and i check out the stuff that you post i i always feel better <laughs> i always feel better when i see it like there's never a time i'm like ugh, like i feel so horrible after this and i look to that stuff like i look to those spaces that lift me up and i think that's one of the things i really love um, about social media is really connecting with people that you don't know that actually elevate you. And we had some great conversations on a, a different podcast and you'll see the, um, there's a link to, to our, our other pod, podcast as well about, you know, the importance of mentorship, the importance of lifting people up. So I, I'm just really excited to have you here. I love just having conversations with you. And if you can just tell people just a little bit about who you are and your educational career, I, I, I know they, they, they're going to love your story. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, George, for having me on. I'm really delighted to be here. Uh, a little bit about me. I am a grade one, two teacher currently uh, at in Victoria, BC. I'm a passionate teacher. I've been teaching for over 10 years now, and I'm also a mom of two kids. So Tyson and McKenna, who are four and six, respectively. And um, basically, I started 
just getting really inspired to do a lot of research around well-being and um, maybe I was just a little tired mm -hmm. honestly as right. a as a new mom and coming back into the the teaching realm and and just doing a lot around self-care and and the research around how do we build strong communities within our classrooms how do we build a culture of inclusion and positivity and I got really into Adam Grant and Brene mm -hmm. Brown and Malcolm Gladwell and all sorts of different people and started blogging and then started a podcast called Kindsight 101 and have just written actually a book that's in production and is set to come out very soon. So it's been a really fun journey. And so I guess I wear many hats. Yeah. And, and like when you're like, I, I think the, the one of the reasons I want to have you on is because, you know, we want to talk about the, the book and kind of like how applicable it is because people are feeling very overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, you know, I, I'm having this like really weird feeling and I don't no, I feel like it's still 2020. Like, I feel like, do you know what I mean? Like, I, I know it's yeah. 2021, but it feels like yeah. this has just been this like two year long year. Like, it just feels mm -hmm. like it's kind of um, overwhelming. And so when you talk about like some of the things that you focused on, how has that like helped you in the classroom? Like, what, what has that actually done? Because I think a lot of times, uh, you know, people see all the stuff that you share but like, mm -hmm. how does it actually like improve learning in your classroom? How does it help students, yeah. the ones you work with every single day? Totally. I think this is key. So I think, you know, there's been a really big push with social emotional learning in the mm -hmm. classroom. And the whole idea behind it is, can we regulate our emotions? Can we get to a place where children come out of our school system being able to be, you know, highly functioning adults, like having a good sense of their understanding of themselves and their emotions and their their uh, interactions with one another, their thinking, all of that, really being metacognitive about their their approach with each other and then their, old, their own self-concept. The irony, however, is that many educators uh, have a hard time with mm -hmm. a lot of the skills in there. Not that we're not experienced, it's just to dig into that self-knowledge, to dig into who we really are, our goals, our dreams, our what makes us feel happy, all those self-care mm -hmm. practices, those are things that, in fact, we need to be practicing ourselves and we don't always. And so I think a lot of the work that I've been doing in the last, you know, four or five years has been around how do I take care of myself, not just with meditation and, mm -hmm. and self-care, but also like craft the life that I want to be leading set goals that are really ambitious and in tune with my values how do i do those things in such a way that when i'm living a really wholehearted life where i feel proud of where i'm going and i feel proud of the trail that i'm leaving behind that i that energy comes off in the classroom that i'm able to through example mm -hmm. tell my students you can be an author you know i right. see these kids who have limitless energy beautiful you know creativity you give them one little spark of an idea and off they go in in so many direct like really amazing skills and to be able to sit there and really tell them with conviction you know you can actually do something with this and you may not see it right now your parents may not see it right now because maybe it's a lot mm -hmm. but you have so much creativity in you that you can do something with this and so i think being able to follow follow that calling or that little voice inside that says you can do something that maybe seems insurmountable or seems kind of a bit of a stretch. If you yourself do mm -hmm. that, it's like growth mindset, you're able to trickle that down to the kids and then they can actually see themselves in, in the light that you, you know, the light that you shine on them. And I think that's really what this is about. Um, yeah. In a nutshell. I, I think one of the, one of the things that you bring up, you know, like as a, adults, uh, we struggle with some of these concepts as well. And I remember uh, having a conversation, we were talking about, you know, like I, I do a lot of work kind of getting people to think about like what's some of the positive ways you can use social media. And you're just such a great mm -hmm. exemplar for that. Like how do you actually utilize this stuff to like, you know, lift mm -hmm. people up and, you know, uh, help elevate one another. And a person that didn't utilize social media connect in any way. So I don't want my kid on tech we need to teach our kids balance. And so one of the things that I got mm. from Will Richardson is like, Hey, if you don't use it, are you actually in balance? Like mm. if you don't actually use it at all. Right. And kids, mm. and you're, you're also out of balance there too. But I remember actually asking that person like, Hey, do you think, you think balance is really important? Right. And mm -hmm. she's like, absolutely. It's crucial. We teach the kids. And I said, as a teacher, are you a balanced person? Right. And it was just like, it was like, mm -hmm. Kind of like saying like we preach that, 
but mm-hmm. then but then you're at school till like 10 o'clock at night and you know right. you're you're maybe kind of going overboard with some things too right and I, I like I'm a, I'm a big believer I was having a conversation with someone just recently and I I was like I was the principal who like left immediately after school to go to the gym because that helped me become a better principal and then I'd work at different hours and things like that and you know yeah. that was to me like that was a, an important facet um there there is one thing I think when we have those internal struggles and I don't know if you have any thoughts on this is that then um there can be some like you know maybe it's a little bit of jealousy educator jealousy and you talk about like kids you know we want them to be creative and we want them to inspire the spark but then then I hear people say like oh you can't be a prophet in your own land and it's like why not like why can't like why can't we celebrate people in our own community and it's like we will covet like this is a joke that I talk talk about with principals all the time is that if I go to their school in the United States and I share an idea that they've shared 10 million times all of a sudden it's a brilliant idea because it's coming from a Canadian guy but then yeah. in my own school district I you know it was like oh, another George thing but then someone else yeah. comes say says it and I think like I don't know what your thoughts are but sometimes I struggle with seeing that is that kids are watching us not necessarily celebrate the achievements of one another and then what do you think they're going to actually end up doing as they get older like like we can't be I don't know like I don't know if I'm and I think some of that comes from security yeah go ahead sorry go ahead yeah I have like yes Sorry. I have, I have some thoughts on that for sure. Mm -hmm. Like, I think there's some basic, you know, human psychology at play there. I think when we're part of these, we're part of these communities, it really serves everybody like back in evolution. It served everyone to be on the same level, Mm -hmm. to not be, you know, not be that tall Daisy. You want everyone at the same Mm -hmm. level because then you're safe that way. As soon as anyone stands out, then you are fodder for, you know, you're, you can be prey. And so I think that like internal, sort of fear of standing out still lives within us. And Mm -hmm. then it also, what it does is alerts other people. Well, actually, you know, maybe you need to run a little faster or maybe you need to be more or whatever. Mm -hmm. And so I think sometimes that's that negativity that will hold people down who are maybe aspiring to bigger goals or bigger ambitions. I think also when you are doing something that is risky or challenging or ambitious, you do have to clap for yourself. Like you have Mm -hmm. to dig deep and you have to have that courage to be like, there's, it may not make sense to anybody else, but me. And I think that's a piece that I've, I've grappled with too. Um, It it can be lonely to be successful or to feel like you're Mm -hmm. on this trajectory because, because you don't know necessarily that people will understand or that they won't compare themselves against you. And again, that's not about you. It's about, it's about them and Mm -hmm. it's about their value system. So you have to just have conviction that what you're doing is like, for me, I think about service, like how might this help other people? Do I believe in it? Am I proud of it? Mm -hmm. And if I am, and somebody has a problem with that that's really not about me and if someone from somewhere else sees the value in that that's a wonderful thing but the reason that maybe some people closer to us don't even our friends I think sometimes that can be alarming and kind of like oh my gosh I'm putting myself out there why don't I feel supported um I think it just can be threatening for some people so then that's where when we're doing these courageous things we just need to dig deep and clap for ourselves and then surround ourselves with those people who no matter what are behind you and they're clapping for you and Mm -hmm. and you will you will find those people it just takes time and and i think that that's a big piece and so you are not for everybody Mm -hmm. and and you won't be for everybody and and that's really empowering to realize that and then sit with that and be like but that's okay because i'm super proud of the work that i've done and i'm proud of the impact that i'm having on other people and i think because of maybe the work that i'm doing like i like that feeling i attach my the work that i do to like a word like how do i want people to feel after Mm -hmm. they've interacted with me do Mm -hmm. they feel inspired that's that's important do they feel empowered too to sort of step into those dreams a little bit and and push beyond the envelope of what they thought they were capable of. That's what that's what success feels like. Not pleasing people who may not understand what I'm after, you know? Yeah, like I, I really, yeah. I don't, to be honest with you, I can tell pretty quickly when people, you know, some people I associate with me don't, aren't cheering for my success. Like, aren't like saying yes. like, hey, like, hey, have you thought about this in a way that they're trying to elevate me? They're trying to like bring yeah. me down. And I, I'm just maybe getting to an age where I'm kind of crotchety and I'm like, nah, I don't have time for this. <laughs> like I, like I have, you know, like, because yeah. it doesn't just affect me. It affects, yeah. it affects my family. 
It affects like how I interact with my kids. It affects my night. Yeah. So I'm just like, yeah, I don't have time for you, right? Like if you want to do this. And I think part of it is like it is some of our own security. And it's not like I don't want to ever pretend like I'm just like so happy for everyone that gets success. And I never have feelings of jealousy. I never yeah. do that. No, I, I'd be lying too, right? I, I try to recognize it. I try to deal with it. And I try to be, you know, how can I be better for this person? How can I elevate that too? Cause like, just like you, I want to be the best interaction people have in a day, but I mm-hmm. fall short of that all the time. And I have to reevaluate and say like, wh- why did, what did I do wrong there? How can I actually be better? But it's also understanding that when we're that, yeah, you might have become an author, you might have done this, but this person has done these really incredible things with their time that, you know, are, are different, but they're not any less successful and maybe not any less valuable. And I think part of that uh, is true. And one of the things that you said, Morgan, and I think that is, is important, is surrounding yourself with the people that are cheering you on and elevating you. Mm-hmm. And I've, I, I've, I've watched people um, say like, oh, like social media is just like an echo chamber. I'm like, mm. maybe, who cares? Like the, if the, I'm, it's personal learning network, which means I can personalize it to the way that I want. And maybe I need an echo chamber. Maybe I need to be in a space where people are saying, you're awesome. Because yeah. maybe in my own school, people aren't saying that. People are like, you know, bringing me down. Maybe there's some like professional mm-hmm. jealousy. So maybe, yeah, like I, like I don't want to get crapped on at school and online. Maybe just one, yeah. right? Like yeah. maybe... <laughs> Maybe just one of them, like, and, you know, and, yeah. and maybe, and I think a lot of times that maybe gives people some confidence to say like, you know what, I, I feel like I am on a, doing this in a, in a good way. I am doing this and I'm getting that confidence. And then they go do some incredible things because it's really easy to get caught up and say, you know what, I don't want to stand out. I just, you know, and you don't have that support. And then, and then really, how is that actually like, it, it hurts kids long term, Right. And so like, I really appreciate you yeah. sharing that. Cause I think a lot of people, you know, including myself like I you know I struggle with my own professional personal jealousy of things and and I try to like figure out like how do I get better like how do I learn from that that person's doing something that I wish I was doing what Mm -hmm. how what can I learn from them what things can I do that they are doing and apply to my own life and one of the one of the things that I love about your podcast, Kind Sight and What I Want, it is really kind of like uplifting. Can you just tell people a little bit of kind of like your podcast and, and a little bit like uh, about the theme of it? Sure. So essentially it started uh, really about kindness, Kind Sight mm-hmm. 101. It was about is about sort of promoting that that sort of kind atmosphere and and really about culture building. Like that's mm-hmm. what it was about. How do you create cultures in schools that are positive and empowering and uplifting and kind of cut through some of that, that you know, the toxic drama that can kind of come mm-hmm. up in, in any school, whether mm-hmm. it's with the kids or with the teachers. And what I realized actually is that so much of it is human, like human interaction stuff, you know, con- connections. And so I've had so many amazing guests that t- have talked about education specifically or mm-hmm. or psychologists who have talked about human connection and how how do we create rapport or how do we build trust um i've had people like seth godin on to talk about really yeah education. seth godin that's pretty cool yeah that's yeah cool. i've coached for him like i've learned hmm. a lot actually about about how to um just how to create that that reciprocity with people just through your generosity from him like specifically hmm. in his you know in his workshops and things yeah he's been amazing like amazing i know him um like kind of personally now like because we've worked a lot together i'm, um, I'm gonna i'm gonna then, do i'm gonna do a hookup yeah, after this I'll, i need a hookup yeah yeah you got it right. um but he yeah so he was a big he was a mentor for me he mm-hmm. taught me like about that you know you give without without recompense you know the expectation of recompense mm-hmm. and then and then you never know it might be from that person but it might be from someone else but you build goodwill right and then the other thing too, um, like, you know, I've had Stuart Shanker on who talked a lot about, you know, um, about the triune brain and how we react when we're feeling like we're out of out of whack or we're feeling threatened and how trauma impacts us. Mm-hmm. And I've had so many interesting people on the show that have sort of opened my eyes to how do we function as humans in schools and then how do you bring out the best in people? Mm-hmm. And so that's essentially what my podcast is about. And, mm-hmm. and it started about kindness, but it really has broadened into really about just interactions with people and it's it's widely i think applicable whether you're you know at home with your family there's a lot around child psychology but then also with our colleagues or even with our friends so yeah that's uh you know i I appreciate you saying like all the uh, amazing guests that you had but 
he never mentioned what me. What about you? <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, oh, that's the wrong one. <laughs> yeah, so I'll give you my, this is my daughter. <laughs> that's okay. Whatever. That's fine. I don't want to be mentioned. That's fine. No, like, th- that's pretty incredible. Like, those are, you know, Stuart Shanker, yeah. Seth Godin. That's uh, uh, pretty incredible. I just, I had to, I had to use my soundboard just once. You did. You I did. just had to use it. I had to figure out something to complain about so I can get my daughter in there. <laughs> um, oh, hey, so, so, so we, um, so you have a, a book coming out, and like we joke about it basically on, on coming out really soon on teacher burnout, and people are exhausted. People are you know overwhelmed, and it's it, it's it's like it was. It, yeah, you know, like oh, like we just think twenty nineteen people are, like people are like working so hard and exhausted and you just think that you can't do anymore. And then all of a sudden everyone's expected to do way more like it. And it's just like, like it wasn't, it wasn't even, you know, it was already, there was like a, I feel like there was like a mental health crisis way before 2020. Yeah. Right. And it just made it worse. And, 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 you know, I think a lot of people are leaving the profession, uh, you know, exhausted, looking for ways out. And, and yeah, like I, I can understand that. I, I, I talked about this actually. There was, I don't know if you saw this or if, if I'm like this. Do you remember there was like this two weeks when the pandemic happened? And for two weeks, teachers were like the most celebrated people in the world for like two yes. weeks. Pay them more. Right. Yeah. yeah like yeah. I can't do that. And, yeah. then, and then it was like, and then it was like, so it was like uh, complaints about teachers. Teachers are the worst. Oh, you're the best for two weeks. And then it's like, Mm -hmm. and then it's like, didn't matter if your school, uh, if your school, you know, had in-person learning, uh, you were evil. Uh, if you Mm -hmm. were doing uh, virtual learning, you were evil. It was like, there was no win. Right. It was actually like, I I ref basketball for years. Uh, Mm -hmm. and it's like, you're wrong a hundred percent of the time to 50% of the people. (laughs) That's, that's really what roughing is, right? You're wrong a hundred percent of the time to 50% of the people. So you're just getting it from all directions. And so like that compounded with all the stresses of like, not even having to think about that. So obviously your book is very applicable, but you know, I think, uh, right now as, as this, this, uh, podcast is, is posted, um, it's available for pre-order. So can you just tell a little bit about kind of your book and, and what's about and what you hope to achieve from it? Yeah, absolutely. So um, the book is called uh, From Burnt Out to Fired Up. And essentially, it's about finding that wholeheartedness within yourself again as an educator and doing that by not only just taking care of yourself through, you know, mindful, reflective practices, which is what most of those books around self-care and teacher wellness is about. But it's also about digging deep into how do we reframe and become more resilient in the face of adversity, which is essentially what we've all lived through throughout Mm -hmm. this pandemic, whether Mm -hmm. you were hybrid model, whether you were in class with masks on, whether you were online exclusively trying to manage all these kids who who ghosted you on, you know, Google Classroom or whatever. (laughs) It just, it was hard. And so there's- I've never, I've never heard anyone say- (laughs) <laughs> Go, ghosted in kids not sure but, but that's that's the best i'm just gonna say that's a right pre- it's an analogy I, I feel like it fits that right? was good sorry um, where did you go where did you go yeah um <laughs> and then and then there's the refocusing so once you've kind of come to terms with where you're at you've reflected on who you are you've reframed that adversity you're feeling more resilient then you get to this refocusing okay so what now what how do we move forward how do we set goals so so essentially the book is structured this way Mm -hmm. and then we get to that reconnection part so how do we reconnect with the people who hold space for us in our lives at our you know in our schools that's such an important piece like social connection is the number one determinant of of our success and happiness as humans and even our life like like our our life expect expectancy so all of these things are so important and then finally reveal and this is the this is what i feel particularly passionate about with this book is there's an element of creativity so how do you tap into your creativity Mm -hmm. um in such a way that you can reveal kind of who you are the passions that you bring with you to the world and you can do that within the classroom like it doesn't have to be about painting it's about how do you bring a joy and intention to the meals that you make for your kids how Mm -hmm. do you bring that sort of passion and creativity to the lessons that you that you teach your children in your classroom like how are you present with your Mm -hmm. students and so this book really unpacks that and shows you how it's a nice slow roll and it's lots and lots of research but then tons of practical um, activities like tons there's like 
30 or 40 different journal activities mm -hmm. and all sorts of different research-based activities that really lead the way. So it's easy to follow, which is important. So I, stories too. Yeah. And I love, I love the, like, it's not just like, Hey, let's, let's not just get through this, but like, let's grow through this and, you know, become better because of this. And so I, like, I, I have a question that I guarantee you somebody listening to this has, mm -hmm. and they're, they're going to, they're going to want to ask this. So I'm just, cause I, I hear this all the time. So you're talking about this, you know, bringing this creativity and passion, right? And mm. what about the, what about when you have an administrator that, you know, is like, nope, like here's like a lot of my audiences in the United States that are listening to this mm -hmm. right now. And mm -hmm. I, they're, they'll like, literally they're, they're scripted some of them, right? They're like, you yeah. have to teach this on this day, this way. And yeah. you know, we, we, it's, it's more about, we want every kid to have the exact same experience not yeah. have every kid get what they need, which I think actually means they shouldn't have the same experience, right? Like they, if yes. you give a kid a need, it means they're, they're going to be different things. So mm -hmm. I love what you're saying. A lot of people are going to love what you're mm -hmm. saying. What happens mm -hmm. when you have an administrator that maybe doesn't, you know, believe what you're saying and is maybe taking away some of that creativity from, you know, teachers in the classroom? Yeah. And I think this is the piece, like, I think, sure, where I live, I have, a fair amount of autonomy over mm -hmm. the way that I can perceive and and implement my curriculum. And that's a gift. And I mm -hmm. recognize that in in Texas, it may not be the same case, mm -hmm. you know. And so when I think about creativity, I really what I mean is how do you bring your soul into everything that you're doing in the moment? Like, mm -hmm. how are you infusing that into the way that you interact with children, the way that you really just take a half a second to look into their eyes and really see who they are. Do you in the morning when you greet them, look them in the mm -hmm. eyes and maybe just remember one little nugget about they're seeing their grandma, you know, they've just seen their grandma last night and you're like, how's grandma? Like things like that. It's not necessarily about, about necessarily having like the most creative hook in the world. It's about, mm -hmm. are you bringing your whole soul mm -hmm into that interaction with kids, um, into the things that you're doing. And you can infuse that even with a script. I mean, look at, you can, right. like if you, th let's bring it to scripting. So if you look at two different actors read a script, they can bring their whole selves into it or they can read it really deadpan. And I think that's where the creativity lies. That's the magic. And so you can only bring that if you have, if you've done the work, like, are you reflecting? Are you feeling like a wholehearted person? Are you able to, have your own goals and, and the things that light you up. Do you have people around you that make you feel valued and loved as an educator? Mm -hmm. um, you know, if you have those things and you're putting work into that, then you have more capacity in the present for those students and to be that difference maker. And I think that's how it really impacts kids in the end is you have that energy, you have that passion. I, I threw you I threw you a curveball. I, I didn't know if you're gonna have a good answer to that, but <laughs> nailed it. <laughs> You nailed it. That was pretty good. That was that was awesome. So I, I I love the the actor analogy. That was pretty good. That was that was impressive. I I was like, oh, I'm, gonna, I'm using that one. That's a because yeah, that's that. I think part of it part of it is I get you know I I get asked that question you know a lot of times. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times it's a, the pull aside question. It's like I want to do the stuff you're talking about, but my right. administrator, right? And I was like. So I, I, I think a little, you know, selfishly, I wanted to know about that. Um, so we've talked a lot about education, I talked a lot about kind of some of your views. So, you know, outside of education and outside of you being an author, like what's something you're really passionate about? Like what's something that, you know, really kind of like, you know, makes you a better educator that has nothing to do with education? Okay, two things. Okay. So I, I love working out. Like I'm, I, I love just whatever it is. Mm -hmm. I like to play baseball. I like to play soccer. I go to the gym. Like I love working out. And I think part of that is just, we know that our bodies feel better. You know, there's all these hormones that kind of go off after you never regret a day mm -hmm. when you've gone and moved your body, whether it's a slow walk, it's a hike, whatever it is. I just, I love that feeling. I think it just really connects me on just a very deep level to who I am. Um, and then it kind of makes you forget everything for a little bit. You know, you're just focused on how many more burpees or whatever it mm -hmm. is. Right. And it's, um, and it's, it's kind of, it's a short-term goal that you can achieve. And, and so I really enjoy working out. And then the other piece too, is a creativity thing. So, um, I'm a total amateur. I'm, I'm not super amazing at it, but I've learned a little bit about it. And I love photography. Like I mm -hmm. just love getting out in nature or doing 
portrait photos of my friends and and you know like a friend just had a book launch and she's like will you bring your camera i'm like of course so it gave That's me something awesome. to do and yeah it's fun so those are things that light me up for sure and i think you know when i talk about those things in the book you know what what are those little nuggets that are just for you that aren't about being mm -hmm. a mom or dad or you know aren't about being a teacher like how do you fill yourself up in such a way that that you have more to give or you have that passion that place of passion that's just for you you know it's it's so important to have that um and it's not just about meditation you know mm -hmm. like i think that's a piece but it's like also that passion of of creating something and and um, achieving something, so yeah, working out and photography are definite passions for me. Well, you you like getting out in nature because you live in Victoria, BC, yeah, right? True. Whereas like yeah. you probably like, I don't want I don't want nature in Edmonton minus forty <laughs> half the time, right? Yeah, Jim, I guess Jim. Yeah, like sometimes I'll see your pictures. And I'm like, I wish I lived there. Like, it's <laughs> I know. freezing out here. It's like sunny, and then it's like a blizzard out in Edmonton yeah, or you're, you're, out in you're in your little ocean, your precious ocean, I know. right? So uh, I know. I hey, know. I, I, I'm I'm really glad to have you on the podcast, and uh, really congratulations on the book. And people, Thank I know you. people listening to this are going to just you know want to get it right away. Uh, you have such valuable advice, so congratulations on that, and, and keep inspiring people. Uh, keep inspiring me. I'm going to, I'm going to try to up my Instagram game a little bit. I'm going to start <laughs> tagging you, you on it. Yeah. So I'll maybe start <laughs> tagging you like, Hey, Hey, look, uh, here's the snow in Edmonton day one. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So, um, and then I'll be rubbing it in. Exactly. How nice and sunny yeah. it is. Don't right. do not tag me on ocean pics. I'll get like upset about that. So <laughs> anyways, thank you That's so much awesome. for being on the podcast. Everyone. Thanks for listening. I hope you have a wonderful day. Best of luck on the book release. I know it's going to be a huge hit. So thanks. Thanks for taking the time. Thanks, George. It's been a pleasure. Thanks. Take care, everybody.